Good evening, viewers, and welcome to the Joy News channel. You are watching Majority Caucus, where we bring you up to speed on the work being done by the government of His Excellency John Dramani Mahama in fulfillment of the mandate that the good people of this country bestowed on him in 2012. Uh, we will take a short commercial break, after which we will come back and introduce the subject for discussion this evening. You are watching Majority Caucus on the Joy News channel. My name is Felix Kwachi Ofusu, and this evening I will be in your company for well over 40 minutes to discuss matters pertaining to the delivery of the mandate bestowed on President John Dramani Mahama in 2012. On the 15th of December 2015, President Mahama launched what has come to be known as the Accounting to the People book. Now, this book is a 210-page publication, which essentially highlights the work that he and his team have been engaged in to ensure the development of our country and the enhancement of the livelihoods of our people. So this evening, I will endeavor to walk you through the key highlights of that publication, which essentially captures the totality and summation of the work that has been done in the last three years or so. We call it accounting to the people because we believe that accountability is at the very heart of democratic governance. And to the extent that we have benefited from the mandate of the people, it is incumbent on us as a government to render account in a manner that is concise and in a manner that is in accordance with laid down standards. Um, I will jo be joined shortly by my colleague, uh, James Ajenim Mbwati, who will be doing the questioning, actually. I would endeavor to provide answers and engage him in a discussion that fosters greater understanding of accounting to the people. You may have seen accounting to the people, and as we bring this program to you, for those of you who are ICT inclined, you can log on to the Government of Ghana website, ghana.gov.gh, uh, moc.gov.gh, and presidency.gov.gh, where you can download soft copies of Accounting to the People. You can also navigate through the contents of the book on greenbookghana.com, which should assist you to access information contained in this book. Like I said, it's a 210-page publication. You may have seen it, and it is widely spoken about. The book is divided into four sections in accordance with the thematic areas that the NDC campaigned on in 2012. So the first part deals with putting people first, which essentially deals with the social sector. Uh, sectors like education, health, social protection, youth and sports are dealt with. Then you go to expanding infrastructure, which forms the basis for the smooth takeoff of any economy, where issues like water, transportation, communication, housing, power, and what have you are discussed. Then there's a section that speaks about strengthening the economy, uh, where issues like job creation, uh, macroeconomic management, microeconomic management, and the likes are discussed. Then the final part uh, brings you information regarding what has been happening in the governance area. Uh, parliament, the judiciary, the executive itself, uh, our foreign relations, uh, local government, and other such uh, related matters. Now, the second part of the book deals with what is happening in our localities. Uh, we have been embarking on a concept of decentralization for the better part of two decades. Now, we bring you pictorial proof of the investments that have been carried out in the various districts. Now, because of want of time and space, it was practically impossible to capture everything that had been done in every district in Ghana. But to the best of our abilities, we endeavored to bring you as much proof as possible, which is verifiable on the ground, so that you'll be brought up to speed on issues happening in our locality. So we'll go through the contents of this book, and we will dedicate uh, this session to a general review of the publication. In subsequent editions of this program, we will bring you detailed analysis of the sector-specific issues. Now, before we do that, and before I'm joined by my colleague, uh, James Ajenim Boatin, let's go for a short commercial break, after which 
uh, we delve straight into action. Welcome back. This is the Majority Caucus. My name is James Ejinim and I'm here with Deputy Minister for Communications, Honorable Felix Kwachi Ofusu. Honorable Felix Kwachi Ofusu. Felix, it's a pleasure um, to welcome um, you. This is the maiden edition of the Majority Caucus, and it's our pleasure to be hosting you. We're dedicating um, this first edition, as Felix did point out, to the um, Green Book, the book that's entitled Accounting to the People, which was recently outdoored by His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana, John Dramani Mahama. All right, and Felix has given you enormous background to the book. Um, now, a bit of providing background to the book. Felix, um, what really explains the case for this compilation? Well, as I said before the, the break, it is a duty of every government to account to its people. Now, the, the, the point of departure would emerge where discussion comes to be had about the mood of this accounting process. The idea of compiling a document into which enormous and vast amounts of information are put is not entirely novel. Uh, you would recall that under the MPP, uh, similar publications were held. Indeed, I brought a copy of what they did, uh, four years of positive change, so far so good, which was compiled by the MPP government. Indeed, the foreword was provided by the Honorable uh, Dan Butri, who was then Information Minister. And in that publication, they indicated that every year they have uh, brought out this publication to keep the people informed. Now, we thought that the concept was not bad. Uh, even if we had criticisms about the content and quality of the publication, I'm sure you are familiar with the famous uh, page 40 of this book, which shows uh, a monkey, um, and tree. indeed people have had cause to criticize uh, the showing of that as an achievement. But even if you were to put that aside, the concept of compiling a publication into which you put information about the work that government is doing is not one that can be uh, dismissed. And since 2011, we have been embarking on this. You recall the top 50 achievements of the Mills administration. That was the first green book. Then came overview of the Better Ghana Agenda. That was the second book. And then we have accounting to the people. Now, this book essentially puts beyond doubt the work that has been engaged in by the government led by His Excellency John Dramani Mahama. Uh, before you came on board, I spoke about the thematic areas, mm -hmm. which basically helps people navigate yeah, along in an orderly the fashion. Is yeah, if you go to the education sector, for instance, that perhaps is the area where government has invested the most. Uh, when we came to power, the most critical challenges affecting the education sector were infrastructure or the lack of it. Mm -hmm. um, you know about the phenomenon of schools under trees. There were 4,321 schools. That's for primary schools. For, for basic schools. Basic schools. Uh, across this country that were held under trees. And it was not the most appropriate condition under which to educate Ghanaian children. So government took it upon itself to eliminate this spectre with a view to providing a more conducive environment. As I speak to you, and if you look at uh, page 8 of this book, uh, we give account of what has been done. 1,614 out of 2,578 such projects that were started have been completed and delivered. Uh, the remaining will be completed in due course. Uh, we speak about materials that have been distributed for the purposes of educating our children. Uh, 100 million exercise books mm -hmm. in the course of four to five years. Uh, over 12.5 million textbooks, which has enabled us reverse the textbook to people ratio, which stood at one, sorry, three pupils to one book. Now, four textbooks are people. given to one pupil. And so we reversed it and even exceeded the United Nations benchmark. We have distributed over two million school uniforms mm -hmm. for school children in deprived communities whose parents had difficulty procuring such uniforms. We have distributed 10,000 sandals and these have significantly helped improve access well, some, to education. Some, yeah. some have described some of these interventions as tokenism. But what for you is the impact? I mean, what, for example, does it mean to shift textbook to pupils ratio from one textbook to four pupils? Um, now, uh, by reversing it for, um, this time to four textbooks to one pupil, what does that mean? What is the impact of that? Again, I, I disagree strongly with those who would have viewed that these interventions amount to tokenism. 
You see, perhaps the most pressing concern, apart from the lack of infrastructure, regarding our educational system has been the quality. And for years, we have all lamented uh, what we perceived to be the declining quality of education. If that was going to be corrected, then it was necessary that something was done. Now, we found that one of the most binding constraints to achieving quality was a lack of material and mm. content. Therefore, if you had a situation where four pupils were sharing, or three pupils were sharing one core test book, it didn't provide for a conducive environment. What it meant is that if, if one person three took exactly crammed around, well, one that is book, even if they were to they, they managed place. to agree among themselves that we're going to cram around it. What if you needed it for an assignment, uh, as a reference material, and one child took it home? What happens to the two? That certainly was going to impact on quality. Indeed, if you look at the table that we show on page eight, mm -hmm. it gives you at a glance information regarding the improvements that have been attained regarding access. Now, by 2008-2009, there were a total of 7,038,738 school children at the basic level. Mm -hmm. Sorry, at all levels of education. That is if you added uh, basic education to uh, senior secondary education and tertiary education. As I speak to you, because of these investments and the expansion that has taken place, we are talking of an increase of about 1.8 million students at all levels. So currently, or as of the 2014-2015 academic year, 8,891,892 uh, students were in our educational system. That is 36% of our population, or an increase of 26%. And it's a significant, perhaps the biggest jump in enrollment and access in the last two decades or so. Now, quality is also improving. Uh, the students are doing much better in examinations than before. Indeed, if you look at the table that we provide, which shows uh, pass, passes in WASI, the West African uh, Senior uh, School Certificate Examination, whereas in 2008, just 14.58% of candidates from Ghana passed. As of 2014, when the last reckoning was done, 28.1% of these pupils passed. Indeed, in 2012, about 31% of them passed. It is not ideal. But it is certainly an improvement about what we. In fact, in 2007, where the worst record emerged, only 10% of pupils who were presented for that examination passed. So surely, the improvements could not have dropped from the skies. It is the direct result of investments that have been made, and also parents have been met uh, halfway. For in, parents in who, sense? in what sense? How for instance, if you could not afford a school uniform mm -hmm. for your child, and that posed a constraint for which reason the child stayed away from school, lest he becomes the butt of jokes uh, for his colleagues. And government comes to your aid and gives you or gives your child a uniform. It removes that responsibility that you had to take money out of your pocket and purchase a school uniform for the child. If your child has benefited from the 100 million exercise books that have been distributed, mm -hmm. you are saved that money because you would have bought it. And so on the average, like you have to buy like 10 to 15. Pockets. Exactly. You, so the money that you would have spent on procuring exercise books are kept in their pockets. How, how, how about the area of ICT? You know, I mean, for many people, ICT is the way to go. The future really is hinged on how knowledgeable, I mean, these future leaders are in the area of ICT. We are not unfamiliar with many people who, um, uh, until not too long ago, may even have completed university without touching a computer keyboard. Um, yeah, that is before. true. I mean, ICT, What's the situation ICT now? drives the world. And I'm in a position to know. I work at the Ministry of Communications, whose duty it is to manage the ICT sector. Uh, through a number of interventions, namely the basic school computerization program, the master's program, and other such interventions at various What levels. is master's? Master's was a mass and science and technology scholarship okay. that was awarded to students who showed preference for mass science and technology education. It was just established to encourage people to go into that area. Now, if you look at all the numbers, as of 2014, about 60,000 of such computers had been distributed to pupils. In order to ensure that the education curricula had people manning it who had ICT skills, about 60,000 teachers also have been taken through ICT education to hone their skills, to be able to impact the knowledge that is required in that sector uh, to our pupils. And this has led to significant improvements. Indeed, if you go to an organization like GIFEC, which is under mm -hmm. my ministry, they have a program uh, that they call the uh, uh, School Computerization Program, where they distribute computers and other accessories to senior high schools. And they have worked with over 600 such schools to inject ICT penetration 
into the way that they do their thing. So, and this is a resounding success. But if I may move quickly to the senior high school sector. I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to get sure. there in a All bit, right. but let me just say that viewers can join the show on social media by sending their comments, questions, and suggestions to the Joy News Facebook platform. These comments will be read later on on the show, so viewers can join us on the show. Um, viewers can join us on the show on social media by sending their comments, questions, and suggestions to the Joy News Facebook platform. These comments will be read on the show later on. We also give you the WhatsApp line. Now, um, before we move on to secondary education, Felix, I'm sure you're very familiar with the situation where um, sometimes you meet uh, school pupils who you ask why they're not in school in the morning and they tell you that they're going to school in the afternoon. You meet them in the afternoon, they tell you that they went to school um, in the mornings. I mean, I'm talking about truancy. What shift system, yeah. has been done about it as a result of a shift system? Well, an aggressive battle uh, was waged uh, against this phenomenon in order to eliminate it completely. If you go to places like Wa, Sunyane, Accra, another part of this country, that system has been all but eliminated. Indeed, if you come to Accra, places like Dansuman, uh, Dakuman, where I was born, uh, if you go to Mamprobi, uh, the MCI school, mm -hmm. uh, M1 cluster, uh, if you go to places like Zamrama Line, which is in the Ablikuma Central uh, constituency, places like Natabi Okoshi, so you will find imposing 18 unit classroom blocks, which have made it possible for the shift system to be eliminated so that if you met a child who should be in school and was not in school there was no excuse beyond he or she playing truant and that has helped a lot to enhance uh, the teaching and learning experience in, in those parts of our country so it is something that we are tackling vigorously the Accra metropolitan assembly mm -hmm. has been at the forefront of this intervention and only recently they completed another one uh, around the Dakuman area which would significantly boost uh, education in that part of our Let, let's move now to secondary education what have been the key interventions in this area well the flagship project uh, before i come to that you recall that when the mpp government in 2007 decided to extend the duration of senior high school education from three, three years to, to four, four years it was not accompanied by any comprehensive plan to expand infrastructure in view of the fact that because of the additional year added we are going to retain more students, and that mm -hmm. was going to swell the numbers. So there was a crisis when the NDC took over in 2009. Uh, President Mills then launched the Emergency Classroom Block Project, and out of that, 1,079 six-unit classroom blocks were provided for senior high schools across the country, and 189 uh, 18 story, sorry, two-story 18-unit uh, uh, dormitories were also provided for various secondary schools to simply cope with the numbers. So that was done. But it was soon realized that the existing number of secondary schools were inadequate to absorb the numbers that were produced at the uh, basic school level. That is, after candidates write the BEC, the number of them who passed outstripped the capacity that existed at the time uh, for them to be absorbed to access senior high school education. For that reason, President Mama in 2012 uh, promised to embark on the Community Day Senior High School project. He promised 200 Community Day Senior High Schools. Currently, their work is ongoing in 123 places. I hear people say that oh, only four have been completed. Uh, the MPP likes to trample this a lot. I don't know why they think that they can engage in such self-deception. It is true that the president has had opportunity to commission four, but more have been completed. If you go to places like uh, Dema, Dema is in the uh, Tano South District of the Bonafo region. Mm -hmm. uh, a community day school has been completed there. If you go to Krache in Chumu, in Chumu. which is in the Volta region, a place called Chinderi, Ch a community day senior high school has been completed. Uh, if you go to other places like uh, Diaso in the Upper West Densha District, uh, if you go to Upper East Densha, if you go to uh, Hunter uh, West Community, uh, sorry, District, if you go to a place called Denyami in the Bonafo region, if you go to Edujama, Edujama is in the, in the what do you call it? The Tria DC is district. Oh. Uh, work is almost complete. Uh, if you go to places like Lambusi, mm -hmm. if you go to places like Samuel Boy, uh, if you go to places like uh, Trimampunia, and all of such them places completion. nearing completion. And it, 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 would, it is only a matter of time yeah, before but, those But, but are these opened. are mega structures. Absolutely. Clearly, they are providing Absolutely. direct and Absolutely. indirect jobs. And you see, we've made use. people yeah. talk about the fact that 
I mean, not many jobs are being created. How do you explain all of these mega infrastructural projects that are coming up and yet people have these concerns about jobs? Well, you see, uh, and excuse my, my language, it is human beings who work on these projects. Okay, now take the community day senior high schools for instance, 123 of them. On the average, they employ 50 workers. There are some who employ 150, some carpenters, 200. Masons, carpenters, masons, and these are artists, and that is what they are trained to do. That is how they earn their living. So when these projects are embarked on, that is when they get employment. So multiply an average of 50, or even if you like 100, by 123, and you find the enormous job opportunities that have been created by these projects. Beyond that, 1,614 schools under trees. Even if those projects also require about 50 people to work on, multiply 50 by 1,614. I mean, we've not even spoken about the two new universities that have been established. A brand new campus at Soko de Lokoya has been provided. And whilst the construction was ongoing, it was people who were working there. The schools that have been built to replace sorry, the, the schools that have been built to eliminate the shift system, mm -hmm. employed people. The production of the exercise books that we are distributing, mm -hmm. all of them were produced locally. And, 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 and the, the, demand, the, the local printing Absolutely, the local print, books printing industry has received well. a major boost because of that. And recently, the president ordered, or sorry, but that's all instructed, that all textbooks be printed locally. locally. And that alone is going to create about a thousand or so jobs for people who were hitherto unemployed. And that is just within the education sector. How so, about teachers themselves? Absolutely. Because all of these structures that absolutely. are coming up, opening absolutely. schools will require absolutely. Um, employment for As we speak, the Ghana Education Service estimates that there is a gap of about 70,000 teachers. In other words, we need 70,000 more teachers. Now, the community day schools alone require 9,000 teachers to staff them. So that is opportunity for another 9,000 of our comrades, or if you like brothers and sisters, to find employment. Beyond that, there are people who will manage the facility. There are laborers that you require to work around the facility to maintain it. There are plumbers and technicians whose services will still be required to keep it running. So it's a whole value chain which typically, is creating opportunity. Typically, yeah. what is in a community day senior high school? The well, I think that we need, to, we need to commend the, the designers of the it was, The design was done by AESL, which uh -huh. is a state-owned uh, architectural and engineering uh, firm. Basically, he designed it to make maximum use of land. Now, if you go to traditional senior high schools, you'll find them, them having sprawling campuses with mm -hmm. multiple buildings. Now, it is not the most efficient use of land. So they decided to build vertically and in a compact fashion. That makes it possible to have everything you need within an enclosed space. So these buildings have 24 classrooms, each capable of holding 40 students. They have eight offices. They have offices for various heads of departments. They have a headmaster's bungalow embedded in the building. They have computer laboratories, and they have modern science laboratories. I have a science background. I attended K University. And I can assure you that I have seen the laboratories in these community day senior high schools, and they compare favorably with the labs that we have in some of our tertiary institutions. I also saw their library, mm -hmm. which was well stocked. It's a vast space. That is well stocked. The assembly hall is capable of taking 1,000 people. So even apart from providing assembly grounds for the pupils themselves, the community can use it for large gatherings. The chiefs and their elders can call meetings, town hall meetings, and what have you in, in, in this facility. So the designers were very innovative, and they applied modern techniques to, to design this building, to make it compact so that we don't have to build over a large area in these days of but scarcity of land. Whilst we, are, whilst we are at it, I'm sure that you are not unmindful of certain concerns that have been raised, particularly by trainee teachers, the replacement of their allowances with student loans. Um, how do you explain these issues? Well, again, you know, politics requires candor. And sometimes it is necessary to take decisions that are in the best interests of everybody. We had a situation where about 38 colleges of education were operating below capacity. Some of them were operating at about 40% capacity. Yet there was a vast pool. Why was that? Now I will explain that presently. Yet there was a vast pool of people who have or harbored an interest in assessing teacher uh, training education. 
Now, the constraint, the, the reason why they could not operate at maximum capacity was that resources are scarce. Mm -hmm. And yet, government was paying teaching allowances to students who were admitted to these institutions. And it was making it difficult to cope with the numbers. Because if you check the trend, since the days of Buzia, the uh, teacher training allowance has been reducing. And it reduced to a point where I beg your pardon, the, uh, the intake, intake had been reducing. And it reduced to a point where it was inimical to our progress and interest as a nation. It wasn't commensal to the investment. Whereas we needed more teachers, mm -hmm. we were unable to take more because the money that we had had to be spent on teacher training. Now we have to make a decision as a government to replace that teacher training allowance. Some people go about claiming that we have abolished teacher training allowance. We replaced it. And even then, continuing students still benefit from teacher training allowance. It was new students mm -hmm. who were then introduced to the student's loan scheme. Because mind you, the, the teacher training institutions have now become colleges of education. That means that they are tertiary institutions. There are other tertiary institutions like the University of Cape Coast and the University of Education, Winneba, which also produce teachers. Yet, the students there do not benefit from any allowance. They benefit from the student's loan. So, there was some disequilibrium. And to ensure equity and fairness across the teacher, uh, what called it, uh, college of education landscape, government decided to introduce this measure. So, if you were admitted to a teacher training college, you are able to access students' loan. And we have records of thousands of students who have accessed the students' loan and are able to take care of themselves whilst they receive uh, training in teaching. But it is important that Ghanaians disregard the unfortunate propaganda that the MPP has waged on this matter. You see, they are being very simplistic and narrow in terms of the vision. Because of that policy, enrollment has increased by over 63%. In the past, they used to be able to uh, enroll just about 9,000 or so. That has jumped to close to 15,000. And it is a significant development. What it means is that more Ghanaian students who qualify to access College of Education, uh, to access the College of Education, are now having access. If that hadn't been done, large amounts of people would have stayed at home and would have been deprived of the opportunity to access education at that level. So it's important that when we come to discuss national issues, we are candid and honest about it. If you go about making, making a promise that is inimical to the progress of the sector, I don't think that you have done well. We, as a government, have been honest, we have been candid, and we have thought outside the box to create opportunity for as many of our people as possible. And I'm sure the beneficiaries of this, uh, what do you call it, uh, initiative and their relations and loved ones appreciate the measure that government has put in place. Well, I do know that, I mean, at the colleges of education, it's not just also about the replacement of their allowances with student loan schemes. There's also the issue about feeding grants. Absolutely. As, are these training teachers still being fed? They are being fed. Indeed, only a week or so ago, the finance ministry released 62.7 million Ghana cities. And that is a, a huge amount to cater for any areas that may have accrued and uh, 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 they are feeding going for it. So, and that is an advantage that they have over people in other colleges of education. So government is still mindful of the need to support students in order that they are able to go through colleges of education. And we have not uh, wholesale removed every benefit that they were enjoying, but we, we thought that the teacher training allowance was posing a hindrance. So let us replace it with a more viable option which made it possible for more people to access college, college Okay, education. I'm going to come back in a second and ask you whether these um, community day schools that are opening mm -hmm. have started any admissions yet. But let's yes, quickly yes. just go to the WhatsApp line. Um, this one says that JDM is a real mother, uh, is the real man for Mother Ghana. May God make him to carry the coming election as a winner by Jamal Dean, Action Youth for JDM Coordinator uh, in Tamale. He says, but I wish to meet Honorable Felix Kwache Ofosu one day. He's so good for our party. And um, let me see this. This says, I think NDC government is doing a very good job for Mother Ghana. Just last year, September, I came to Doma Hinkro for my national service and the road from Chemasu to Amasu was very, very bad. But now work is in progress. Besides, a village called Supong was not having light. But as we speak, I'm watching you live. God bless J JM and the NDC from Simon Anthony Supong Doma Ahin Crow. This says, hello, James. Please, I'm Isaac from Sege Ada. You people have to do more to the problems before election time, OK? Um, we're going through some random text, um, uh, random WhatsApp messages. This says, 
Um, good work done, Honorable Felix. The introduction of a four-year SHS didn't go with any infrastructure with it, which kept a burden on the NDC government. The NPP should understand that the amount of work we did could give us day secondary schools, most of the communities in Ghana. But we do things appropriately, hence we took the pain to do the construction. The NPP should thank the government. A number of um, WhatsApp messages um, coming in. This says, can Honorable Felix tell us why those who offered education in the universities uh, are not employed as teachers? That's from Castro in Bulga. Well, I must admit that I'm not uh, well versed in that matter. Uh, mm. I would contact the Ministry of Education for some clarification on the subject. Mm. So next week, uh, we will provide an answer. All right. And this text, um, this um, message from Kwabna Nelson in Chiripon, says, I'm indeed happy to see this program back on our screens. This will give government opportunity to explain to the good people of Ghana what has been done so far. And I know Honorable Felix and Co. will do justice to the issues. Government indeed has done well, especially infrastructural development and promoting peace in the country. And therefore, I choose JM2016. Um, uh, it looks like the WhatsApp messages are coming in more than we first, yeah. can handle. Meanwhile, you can also join us on the social media platforms by sending your questions, suggestions um, to facebook.com slash joy news on TV or to the WhatsApp platform on 0560 800 That's the WhatsApp um, line. This, um, wow, this is just a, just a little, uh, I don't know which of them to read it. <laughs> that in my school, um, uh, I can't quite get, get it. Let me see. Ako Bila uh, Hashimu from Boku says the NDC is marvelous on infrastructure. Now, I think I see this one is coming in from somebody in um, Italy. It says, evening, I'm called Tony from Italy, Milano. Honestly, Kwachi is really enlightening us with the achievement of government, but reality is still staring Ghana in the uh, face. That's uh, from um, Tony in Milan, Italy. And uh, let's see this one. Good evening, host on your guest. My name is James and um, the guest here is Felix. <laughs> the government is doing what many describe as pouring water uh, is in basket because you are putting up education infrastructure and you are not motivating um, teachers, especially training allowance, paying teachers only three months after working for uh, three years. Who will then teach those well, let me uh, correct pupils? That immediately. You see, again, I speak about the, the unfortunate falsehoods that are churned out consistently over a number of issues. It is not correct that government is only paying three months arrears. Uh, for what is old teachers. What has happened is that a lot of fraud and ghost names have been detected in that sector. So when you present, uh, what do you call it, uh, what do you call it? requests for payments to be made for teachers who have worked for some, especially newly recruited teachers, mm -hmm. the Ministry of Education has a, sorry, the Ministry of Finance has a policy that says that, okay, we need to verify the accuracy of the claims that are being made. And we require some time to do it. So in the interim, we will pay three months arrears whilst we do the verification. And once we verify and realize that the claims are legitimate and that people actually have thought the rest is paid. Recently, they released some amounts after they got clearance. And they, they gave clearance to the Ministry of Education to pay some arrears that are owed. So it is not true or accurate that teachers are paid only three months. The three months is a stopgap measure pending the carrying out of verification authentication of the claims that are made. So that is the, the correction that needs okay, to be Okay, let me bring this um, message in. It says, in fact, you are doing extremely well. You've proven that you are well, you are all on top of the job the good people of Ghana have mandated your administration to do. I love to listen to you. God bless you, Gideon in Mankasim. Now, Felix, let's do a quick shift and look at um, university tertiary education, education. Tertiary. tertiary education. I mean, what have been the big 
ticket interventions in this sector. I mean, right away, and I'm sure viewers would agree that it is the introduction or better still, the establishment of two uh, new universities. The University of Health and Allied Sciences at Soko de Lokwe in the water region near Hu, and the University of Energy and Natural Resources in Sunyang. Uh, I'm, 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 they have other campuses elsewhere in the Bonafo region. Now, if you take the case of UHAS, for instance, if you check page 16, I mean, you find the ultra modern campus. There is an area short of it, taken shortly before it was uh, commissioned by President Hama. You see a modern campus with mm -hmm. facilities that rival any other university in Ghana. Now, the difference that this has made is that it has made it possible for the university currently to enroll close to 3,000 students. Now, compare this to 55, start, uh, 55 students that they enrolled in 2011 when they were set up. You recall that the MPP as usual mocked us. They said, oh, the campus was infested with rodents mm -hmm. and other, mm -hmm. uh, uh, what do you call it, such animals. And that was a, a, a place for wild animals, not a university. And yet, we proved them wrong by putting in place this edifice that is enhancing university education in that part of the country. Indeed, when the president read the state relation address in February, he brought... Uh, a living testimony of a student who, by every account, was brilliant and was desirous of becoming a medical doctor. But the limited space in existing uh, universities made it impossible for her to realize her dream. The establishment of this university has made it possible for her to access tertiary education to become a doctor. And that is one more doctor who will be added to the stock of doctors that we have. Uh, they have started a course in medicine and they enrolled their first batch in the 2014-2015 academic mm -hmm. year. And as time goes on, they will be expanding. Even more progress is being made. As I speak to you, a, a modern auditorium is also being constructed. And they are also constructing what is described as the largest science complex in Ghana when wow. it is completed. So this will significantly boost education in that part of our country and give access to those who otherwise uh, wouldn't have had the opportunity. Now, I'm an alumnus of KN University, so permit me if I'm a bit biased here. That's but right. let me start with the University of Ghana, so I'm not accused of engaging in old boyism. In the University of Ghana, significant progress is being made. And this is a health project, but it also has implications for education. A new University of Ghana teaching hospital, which is being constructed with $217 million obtained by government, is nearing completion. And that would also boost training of medical personnel. They will essentially remove the uh, University of Ghana Medical School from Kolebu and relocate it at the University of Ghana now, campus in the teaching of to ensure we're that just we have about access to wrapping up. But, but if I'm you go sure to KNUST, we have modern laboratories I'm that rival any laboratory you will find anywhere in the world. Great. That is enhancing, let's, 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 It's uh, just about uh, wrap up time. Sure. But uh, how about those who will be raising issues about one of the key promises that the NDC made in 2012 with respect to the Eastern University? Yes, the, the, yeah, the enabling legislation has been passed. And the president indicated in the state of the nation address that money has been allocated for construction to start this year. And we have the track record. When we said we would establish two additional investments, we've done it. So the people of Somenia and Don Kokro have full confidence in our ability to deliver. And we'll be able to account for it at the appropriate time. Well, I'm sure that's all time will allow us, Felix. Thank yeah. you very much. And viewers, we're most grateful for your time. Thank you. This is the Made in Edition of the Majority Caucus. My name is James. Good evening.